So before I start my uh, uh, presentation, let me ask you this question. Raise your hand if you like numbers. Does it have here? Okay. Um, so as you can see, numbers are everywhere in our daily life. Um, your board, your board, board and ID number is very important. Um, your passport number, and also here's my driver license. Your driver license number, your date of birth, and all of these numbers, they become a part of your identity. So as you can see here, we use number, sometimes we use numbers to rate people, and sometimes we use numbers to identify people. And um, I would like to talk more about uh, numerical system behind the numbers. Um, we creating you have numerical system to help us collect information. Um, so on TV, we see all kinds of news all the time. And you can see all kinds of like statistics there. Um, for example, there are 2996 deaths in 911. How many people knew this number before? Not a lot, but I'm sure all of you must know some like personal stories or like some personal testimonies from 911. So today, I'm not going to talk about any like math information. So relax, this is not a math lecture. Um, I want to talk about stories behind the numbers. So before um, I go deeper, I would like to share this call with you guys. As a storyteller, we need to know that if you want someone to remember your message in a presentation, an article, or report. The most efficient way is to tell them a story. So the problem is that, as you can see, um, and all the examples I just shared with you guys, numbers are a great asset to any piece of information because um, they give you accuracy to any claims you have. So today, um, I want to share the problem behind those collective um, numbers. At this point, there are a total of 6.64 million deaths because of due to COVID worldwide. And there are over thousands of people lost their jobs just in Massachusetts at this point. Uh, do you have any feelings for that? Probably no, right? Because they're just like some big numbers to me. But what if I said, I lost my mom, she lost a good friend of her during the pandemic. What if I share you with a story that I lost one of my relatives during the pandemic? Will that make a difference? I suppose so. So the problem is all the time we see those big numbers in news. So it's easy for us to feel a wash for our emotions. And we feel disconnected with those big numbers. And today, I would like to use my project to help us bring back to the focus for not just numbers, but for the human behind those numbers. So the name of my project is One of Us, which represents that those people, they're not just a part of numbers. They are us and we are they. And this project will mainly uh, focus on the global pandemic COVID and I'm gonna use three platforms to um, convey my message. So the first one is I'm gonna um, post a poster on Instagram. And the second one is I'm gonna make a, I have a short video for TikTok. And the third one is a short documentary. Um, and all these different ways just to tell a story because we need new stories to bring people's attention back. And because of the limit of time, um, I'm not gonna share all the clips of them, but I'm gonna share um, two minutes from, three minutes from my short documentary and um, a 30 second minutes from, I mean, a 30 seconds from my TikTok video. And why I want to make this project why this project is important? 
Well, this project is aimed to bridge the separation of big numbers and real person, like I just said. And how I'm gonna achieve this goal? I'm gonna achieve this goal by visualizing the human stories behind those numbers. And what I want to um, mention here is that I'm not trying to convey a realization or a fact. I'm just here wanting to convey an emotion that we are all human beings. We are one body in Jesus Christ. And my audience for this project will be whoever use social media. Is anyone here not using any social media? I must uh, supposedly not. So basically, this is for everyone. This is not for any specific um, cultures or countries. As long as you have internet, as long as you have your phone, you can have access to my project. So the first one from my project is the Instagram. As you can see here, um, I created a poster for um, Instagram to promote my project and the, it, the data, the, there are two meanings behind this poster. The first one I want to convey is that we need to realize um, the importance of data, the relationships between data and human beings. And the second part is that it might, like you might not be able to see um, those two words clearly, and that's a goal. Like I want to convey a message that sometimes we um, got confused between the concept of data and human. And the second part is a short video on TikTok. So in this um, in this section, um, I'm gonna use the most popular app in the U.S. and also worldwide, TikTok, to present my um, work. And I'm not sure you know. It's a really short one because it will be present on TikTok and we all know that. We don't want to watch a long video on TikTok. <laughs> and let me go back to um, my presentation. Okay, and the third part is that um, I'm going to show a um, Third part is that I'm gonna show two, uh, three minutes clip from my um, short documentary to help you see the people who just spoke to you guys.
passage in Greek, but where this passage in Greek my mom got a little bit that she was very unique case because she had just gotten her first COVID shot. And then right after that, she got a call from her work saying that she could say close contact with someone who was in the hospital. And so she got tested and then ended up having COVID. And so she lost all of her sensitivities and smell, which was good because she was like, maybe you get the shot that like it's not that bad. But she was a very unique case because she was like, this is unexpected. But it was like really difficult because uh, my mom is like the only person who like put her in in my family's life. So it was nice to have all of us home. But it was like when my mom got COVID, it was just like, so we can't see mom. <laughs> She's stuck in her room. Um, and I have a little sister, she's eight, so she was just like, Do you want to go sit with mom? It's like, no, we're only gonna stay over here. Or she'd be like, I'm gonna go sit with mom. No, you can't. You're gonna stay over here. Um, so it's just like me and my siblings, like me, we have most of the time, and then only seeing our mom, like with her class, just like going to the bathroom or leaving. And so it's just kind of like a little difficult and a little hard because she's like the backbone of the family. And my mom is this like strong, like super crazy, like Latina. Like she is um, literally one of my best friends. She is a full clown. Like my favorite picture of her. Our whole family's favorite. And she is just like this happy, uh, very strong woman. And so, like, seeing her, like, practically, like, suffer a little bit because of COVID, it wasn't as bad, but it's still, like, eating is something really, like, important for people, like, tasting and smelling. So she was just like, I can't even eat any of the things I'm cooking, nor do I know if I'm cooking a thing right because I can't taste it. This week, 63. Uh, this year, if you were filming, you probably better for me. There was a national exam system in China, um, many friends, and um, they actually went to the high school of this experimental school, um, and the COVID really hit different for them, because this year, I don't know if you were filming, you probably better for me, there was a national exam system in China, and that's actually going to take place for my class, class of 2021, and um, in lab this year, but because of COVID, so the whole exam was pushed one month back, which was the first time in like 50 years or 60 years. It just never happens because it's really like a national emergency and it it impacts it, it, it almost everyone I know. There's like literally no one that's not infected, not infected at this point. It, this change and um, they, I, I see them really struggling and stressed about this change because you might think it's a good thing that you get one more month to prepare, but they were ready since they, the, the sophomore year of high school, so all they wanted to do was to get to get over with this, but now like one more month for them, and then you know, my shiangi gets really hot, it's not humid, but they get like 29 million people and not enough to go to There's 6.9 million people living in Massachusetts. China has 1.4 million of population, and I'm one of them. of my project, I would say. The ultimate goal is to elicit the empathy for people when we are talking about our personal memories. And that could make a difference because people are being distanced, especially after COVID. We might um, hear those like collective or public memories all the time on the internet but we forget how important it is to realize that those data, those numbers, there are every family behind every data. And this project is important for me because it um, involves, I would say, all the knowledge I learned at Gordon College. Um, it involves graphic design, it involves video production, um, communication skills, uh, 3D modeling, um, and some design. 
So I would say um, I'm very glad that I got the chance to finish this project and I hope uh, this is definitely not the end of my project. Um, although like my presentation is about to end, but this project will not. So lastly, I want to end with this quote with you guys all. The great comment um, Judas had gave us. My comment is this, love each other as I have loved you. Thank you so much.